Hey guys, Jaden Sports here, back with another card trick video. This time, I am going to be teaching you guys two easy beginner card tricks. Hope you guys like it. Let's get into it. So for the first trick, uh, we have an awesome, but not very well-known trick. Most people don't learn it as a beginner. Most people as beginners learn math tricks. Uh, but I think this is actually a great one. This is a classic with my own twist on it. I call it the mind reading card cut trick. It's pretty cool and it's pretty simple and it teaches you some basic principles of magic. So let's get right into it. So to start, you'll need a deck of cards, obviously. And so you'll need a spectator, uh, a member of your audience, just choose any one of them. And what I like to do is I like to let them shuffle because that way they know you haven't like stacked the deck. Uh, stacking it means like put specific cards at the top or put it in a specific order. So you know that it isn't, you know it's in a random order, but they don't. So if you let them shuffle, then they know that and it just makes the trick more powerful. So give the cards to the spectator, let them shuffle it as much as they want or as little as they want. They don't even have to shuffle, it's their choice. Most will choose to shuffle. Um, it doesn't matter the order of the cards. Some people, especially with beginners, sometimes they're like afraid of them noticing something or of the cards like getting mixed up. But this one, it literally doesn't matter. Then, when you take the back, when you take the cards back, uh, you can do one of two things, and this is very key. So you will either slip it up, kind of like this, and like look at the cards as you put it in your hand. You got to look at the bottom card. But um, sometimes they can see you doing that because you kind of go like this and look down. So what I like to do is I take it back and I say, okay, so you have shuffled the cards, but let's just check they're in a random order. They're not like in a stacked order. Or you can say, okay, you've shuffled the cards, but let's double check that they're all different. So then you flip it over and as you spread out the cards and they look here along these cards and make sure it's not in any order. What you're doing is you're looking right here. You are looking at that bottom card. So in this case, that bottom card is the king of clubs. So this is what's called a key card. In this trick, it is a key card and key cards are used in many different ways in magic. And for this one, you that's the only key card. Some have multiple key cards. So all you have to do is remember this, king of clubs. Then. Uh, set it in between you and the spectator and tell them, okay, uh, will you please do like this? Just cut the deck wherever you like, completely free choice, and then set the other half here, and you will take that card. So then put that up on top, square it up. This is a completely free choice. doesn't matter what card they choose. So then they'll take it. Let's say they cut it right there. So you say, okay, um, can you take the top card? So they take the top card, they look at it. And then I'll show you guys, but I won't even look because you don't know the card. You don't need to know the card. You don't need to look at it. So can you guys see it? But then while they're doing that, you reverse the order of this. See, you take this half that was the bottom half with that key card, the king of clubs on top. I mean on bottom, sorry. Uh, you take that and then you take the top half that they cut off and you put that on the bottom. Because now what you're doing is that you say, okay, can you please put the card on top of here? They put it on top of there. And what you're doing is you are sandwiching that key card that you know right on top of it. So you reverse it. Once again, they look at their card. You take them. And I like to do that. There's different ways to do it. But the way I like to do it is I just take them and then I have this one on top. So they can see like I'm just going to do that. So then they put their card. You put this on top. You can give it a clean cut. You can shuffle it. I prefer not to shuffle it because um, it could mix it up a little bit. But then uh, you can do whatever you want. Here is where it gets cool because you are going to, you're about to do the effect. Uh, and there's so many ways to do this. I like to do something along the lines of like mind reading. So I'll show you. Um, so then you say to the spectator, so I have no idea what your card is. It was a completely free choice. And maybe you can keep reminding them like, okay, do you remember your card just so that they remember it? And then you say, so can you please imagine your card right here? Just imagine this stone little platform floating and etched into it 
is the number of one card, your card. Can you please imagine that? And then just either like stare intently into their eyes or like, I don't know, spread out the cards or do whatever you want, um, something along the lines of that and then be like, okay, I think I have it. I think I just read your mind. And then what you do is you look through the cards, you look through them and all you do is look for that key card, the king of clubs, that key card, which could be any card, doesn't matter. So see, it's right here. So then um, the card right below it, because remember what you did was you sandwiched it on top of it. You put their card was here and you put that on top. So it'll always be the card below. It won't be the eight of hearts that's above it. It'll be below it. Two of diamonds, was that the one? Crew, was that the one? Okay, that was it. So then they'll be blown away. You know their card and it's super simple. This is a card trick that um, teaches you some basic principles of magic. It's got the key card in it, and there's so many things you can do with it. That's what I love about it, is that it's kind of powerful. People are surprised by it, and they have no idea how you did it. But all you have to do is remember that key card. And it's super easy, and with the mind reading thing, you can do whatever you want. Most people kind of just are like, okay, now I'm gonna find your card. They look through, and then they find it, and let's say their card was a three diamonds. They just are like, okay, was that your card? Uh, if you want, you can do a little more showmanship and be like, okay, can you please just think of your card, close your eyes and think of your card, and then just like touch them and act like you're shocked. Like, wow, oh, dang, I think you sent a signal to me. I think I know what card it is. Then look through there and if that's their card, find their card, you know? Um, so many ways you can do it. I love it. So all you have to remember, key card, when you give it to them, they cut it, take their card, and then you just got to reverse the roll of this. Put the bottom on the top. So then their card, sorry, these are hard to pick up on the table. Their card goes right there. Key card goes right on top. Hope you guys enjoyed that trick. I really like it, and I'm excited to see what people do with it. Okay, so that was the mind reading card cut trick. Now I'm going to teach you a two card spread. So, finding two card spread. Like, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's very interesting. All you have to do is you can have the spectator shuffle the deck. So they take it, they shuffle it. Like I said, this is completely optional. I like to do it so they know the deck, the deck is not stacked. And then all you have to do is remember any card. You can go through there. Um, just remember one card. I like to do the top or the bottom. So in this case, ace of diamonds or ten of diamonds. Bottom is probably easiest. So then what you do is you're like, okay, we're going to spread these all over the table. Will you scoot back a little bit so you can see this? You spread them everywhere. So that bottom card, 10 of diamonds, you just keep track of that lo that card's location. You mix them up, shuffle them, put them all on top of each other. And just remember, control that 10 of diamonds, shuffle it around, and then say, okay, can you find, let's think of some random card, but it's not actually a random card you're thinking of. What you say is, will you please, just based on feel, you can like kind of feel the ink, you can just think, like just try your best without thinking too much, try and find the Ten of Diamonds. Now it might not be the Ten of Diamonds, whatever that card is that you know the location of, you tell them that. They go through, they're obviously not going to pick that card, uh, and they, let's say they pick this card, um, so they pick the Nine of Clubs. Don't let them look at it, say, can you look, can you just pick it and put it on my hand, face down? So then you take it and you look at it, but you don't that let them look at it. And you react however you want, like, dang, you actually found it. Or, oh my gosh, I think, can you like see through this? Do you have x-ray vision? Do whatever you want, um, but the, per, act like this is the Ten of Diamonds that they were supposed to find, but do not show them then set it aside and say, okay, uh, let's see if I can do this. Um, let's see, I will try to find nine of clubs. Now you act like you're trying to think of a random card, but really you are thinking of this card because then I will tell you why that's important later. Then you go through and you're like, you debate, you don't just go straight for that card or they'll think something's up. But you go through, you're like, hmm, ah, uh, oh, here, maybe this is it. And then you're like, take the two cards, 
mix them up, make it where they can't tell which one was which or whatever, and then flip them both over, and it looks like you guys just found two cards out of the deck. Out of all 52 cards, you can show they're all different, mixed up, but what you did was you said that they were going to find the Ten of Diamonds. They didn't. They found the random card. It didn't have to be the Nine of Clubs. It could have been the Jack of Clubs. It could have been any card. Well, another club. Um, nine of Spades, whatever. It literally doesn't matter. But then, you just have to know that. You don't even have to sh present it to them like, dang, you actually got it. You can wait. But you just have to somehow get a secret glance. So if you take it back from them, kind of just like look at it. If you just take it back, just lift it up a little bit. Just so you can see the value of it and then set it aside. But as long as you know that value, that's the only thing. And then you say that you are going to find whatever card they found, you say, I'm going to find the whatever their card was. So if their card was the three of diamonds, say, I'm gonna find the three of diamonds. In reality, you are finding the 10 of diamonds that you know the location of. But then once you mix the cards up at the end, uh, or you can do whatever you want with that if you, Somehow just make it where it's not like, okay, I just took this, now let me show you. But then they'll say like, wait, weren't you looking for this card? It's not. So just make sure you don't let them know that. But all you have to do is you're finding the card that you listed in the beginning that you knew the location of. They're finding any random card, and they think they found what you said. And they think that you found um, then... What you said the second time, in reality, you're finding your card. They found whatever, but then you say, um, I'm going to find the Nine of Clubs. But really, they found the Nine of Clubs. So all you have to do is know the location of one card. I would recommend the bottom card. That's the best one to go with. Because when you're spreading out the cards... Okay, we'll be back in just a second. Now that we got the deck squared up, sorry about that. All you have to do is that um, find the location of one card. So why the bottom is easiest is when you're going like this, you tend to kind of swirl around and you mix that top card in there. But then the bottom one, since you start here, stays there. See, the bottom card is still there. And then obviously don't just let it be like off to the side, like kind of mix it in there, but make sure you know. So you can kind of follow it as you mix it up. See, now it's right there then mix it further it's there whatever just keep track of it secretly okay i just lost it this is bad oh there okay just make sure you know the location of it and then um you are obviously finding your card uh and they're finding whatever card but you say you're gonna find their card and it's super stunning if they figure out the secret it's okay um cool for them. Uh, my brother found out the secret the first time I did it, but other times it fools other people. And if they're not trying to find out what you're doing, it will actually fool them. So it's pretty cool. Any two cards, uh, they can shuffle. It doesn't matter. Just somehow um, glance at the bottom card. And like I said in the first trick, what I like to do is spread out the cards and show them, okay, it's not in any order. And then you see that bottom card, okay? Because then when you spread it, they won't pay attention to that bottom card. Even if they did see that bottom card, they saw it getting all mixed up. They don't know that you tracked it the whole time, you know? They don't know that, oh, you were tracking it. It's right there. So it's pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, make sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out my other videos and comment for what you think I should do next. Also, I would probably put a poll in the eye icon up in the corner. So if you want to see more magic videos, comment that. If you want to see more sports videos, just tell us that. God bless you and have a great day.